Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 9.0, and today is day 28. So today we're continuing our training inside of opportunities, wrapping it all up, trying to put a bow. Maybe this video might have one more. We'll take a look. But today I wanted to talk to you about a few more tabs inside of your opportunity itself. We're going to go into details, key dates. We're going to talk about the timeline, and then I'm going to show you how you can sort and filter using your all opportunities tab. So let's dive in. Our sixth icon down, the opportunities applet handshake. We're going to open that up. We're going to dive back into our fictional character opportunity here. Good old mini and mini. And we have spent a lot of time in our documents tab. We've spent a lot of time in our offers and commissions tab. I did want to point out a couple of additional things. So one, you've got the notes tab. This is where you can add notes that would remain inside of this actual transaction or opportunity itself. Just for future reference or current reference, if there's something that you just need to be aware of, uh, this is also sometimes great if you are communicating with like a transaction coordinator or someone else on your team and you just want to have notes inside of there to make sure everyone's staying up to date on what's happening. You do also have your timeline tab. This is really helpful to kind of, you know, find out when you or someone else did something with regards to this opportunity. So you can see we talked about commissions and offers. We've talked about details. We've talked about submitting for review. Right, you can see all of the different things that we have done throughout the life of this opportunity going all the way back to April 3rd when we originally created it. So this is a great sort of history of everything that's happened inside the actual opportunity itself. Um, and you can see on the left hand side, you can filter for a date range, what sort of activity type or what individual was involved in making changes to this opportunity. So that's your timeline. You do also have the ability to create a transaction summary. Uh, this is sometimes helpful, especially once the opportunity closes. If you, for any reason, have documents that you're required to print and store, you could generate this transaction summary and save that um, you know, on top of all the files and just kind of have a one sheeter that shows you everything that happened with this actual deal itself. Let's go way back to the beginning. I'm gonna come back to the details tab. And I wanted to point out the key dates section. So if we scroll down inside of this opportunity, we have this key date section. Now we touched on this briefly when we were building out the opportunity, but I wanted to show you because these key dates, they trigger two different things. One, they're gonna impact your goals section, which we're gonna get to later on in the challenge. So it is important that you are putting in your appointment scheduled, appointment date, agreement one, Right, so your appointment scheduled is what day did you actually schedule the appointment on? Right, so I scheduled it today. When did I schedule it for? I scheduled it for tomorrow. So appointment scheduled date would be today. That's when I actually scheduled the appointment. So today I got the appointment scheduled. So I'm gonna come up to appointment scheduled and I'm gonna say that was today. I scheduled it for tomorrow. Let's fast forward and say, okay, great. Uh, uh, we met on Friday, everything went well. Uh, on the 14th, we actually won the agreement, right? So they said, yep, you're gonna be our listing agent. And then you can see we've already put in, because we demoed it previously, our contract date and close date. These are all really important dates, this section for your goals section. When we get to goals, that'll make a little bit more sense, but I would highly recommend at minimum, you have these dates filled in. Next, you have another series of dates that includes photography, staging, target, go live date, when was it listed, when's the expiration, mutual acceptance, home inspection, appraisal, escrow due, escrow signing. All of that information is important as well, especially when we go into our tasks. So I did tell you when we were building out those custom checklists, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. If we go back to our pipeline view, we're in our phases now, we're gonna click into the under contract stage this little checklist right here, right? This little number indicates that custom checklist that we had discussed previously. So if I click on it, you can see we didn't have any actual tasks that we had created during this stage. You can see in the cultivate phase, right? In each one of the stages, we didn't have any custom stages, but let's just say we wanted to build out a specific task. Let's say we're under contract. We wanna build out a specific one-off task for this opportunity. And it might be something like remove the yard sign, 
I don't know if you're like me, I've occasionally forgotten to remove a yard sign from a house that I sold. So I'm gonna put in remove the yard sign. That's an other type of task, right? So uh, drive out and pull the sign from the yard, got it. Don't need a hyperlink. That's, uh, that's gonna be a pretty high priority because it's always embarrassing when the seller calls and says, can you come get your sign out of my yard or the new buyer, the new owner. But now we've got a due date. So I can say, yep, let's put that on a calendar date we also have the ability to use smart due dates. And these are based upon those dates that we just put into the opportunity details. So I can say on the smart due date, and here you're gonna see all of those dates that we just put in, right? So you can see the contract date, all, right? These are all the ones that we just talked about. The cool thing is we've got a close date. Now I probably wanna get that sign out uh, maybe the day before it closes so I don't have to hear from the buyers at all. So in this case, I could say not necessarily on the smart due date, let's do it before or after the smart due date. And I'm gonna say one day before. So you can see that you can change one weekday, one week, one month. I can make this more than one. I can also say after, so before or after. So I'm gonna say one day before, and then I'm gonna say close date. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down in the bottom here, one day after the close date, or one day before the close date, excuse me, fire this task. So that way, on the day before, 423, right, I'm gonna get this task to show up to remove that yard sign. I could also, if I wanted to, create a task, and let's say, send one month review. All right, so I'm gonna send them a request to review me if they haven't already, one month after closing, Right, and it might be the description would be send Google review link. Uh, I could even have the hyperlink to my Google site. And in this case, I'm gonna say after the smart due date, and it's gonna be one month after, and we're gonna use the close date. So one month after the close date, that task would actually show up. And you can see it actually tells me what date that's gonna show up. So those smart tasks, if you will, based upon smart due dates, will only trigger if and when you have your opportunity details key date section filled out. So that's your key date section and a little bit more about your tasks. You can build checklist tasks or one-off tasks. So both of those can be built using those smart due dates. Finally, I wanted to show you, <clears throat> we talked about the pipeline tabs, right? We've been inside this pipeline view the entire time, but we also have the all opportunities tab. Wanted to draw your attention to that. So if you come into all opportunities, right, you can see that you've got now an entire list and hopefully you've closed more than one deal or have more than one deal in your pipeline than I do here, but you can see the opportunity name, the contacts that are associated. These are both hyperlinked, so you could open up the contact from this view. You can see address, assignees, what type of opportunity is it, what phase, listing price. You can also filter. So I'm gonna come in here and click filter. We had talked about opportunity tags at one point and we added some tags to this opportunity. Let's just say fast forward a year from now and I wanna find out how many luxury deals I've closed. Well, as long as I'm using that luxury tag on each one of those opportunities, I could come in here and click filter for luxury click on apply and it would then show me how many luxury deals I have based upon the tag that I am self applying. So it doesn't have anything to do with list price. That's me actually putting in that tag. I might say, hey, how many uh, first time home sellers did I work with? Right, so I could use that tag. I might just say, hey, how many buyers did I work with? Let's just be real general. So you could do that opportunity. Um, remember we talked about neighborhoods. So if I'm trying to dominate a particular neighborhood, am I using that tag? How many deals did I close in the Disney World neighborhood? So those are some abilities to filter. You could say, let's say right now you've been using opportunities for several years. You've been using opportunities since Command came out. You wanna know how many deals have I done with Minnie Mouse, right? Because Minnie is a serial buyer. Uh, how did I spell that? Minnie, there we go. So how many deals have I done with Minnie Mouse? You could click on apply and then you could see all of the different deals that you've done with Minnie, right? So there's several different ways to build out those filters. And just like in contact filters, you also have smart views inside of your all opportunities. 
So that's pretty cool that you can build out specific smart views to show you specific transaction types or filters that you want to use on a regular basis. So again, all of that is inside of your All Opportunities tab. The nice thing is if for any reason you join a team and then leave a team, your team pipeline will eventually go away, but those team deals will still be held under All Opportunities. In addition, when you close a transaction, right? So when we're in our pipeline and we move an opportunity to the closed phase, it only stays here for 30 days and then it will go away. And sometimes I get people freaking out saying, wait a minute, where's that deal? It falls out of your pipeline such that it doesn't clog up this pipeline forever, never, amen. And yet, remember, you can find that in your All Opportunities tab as well. So that's it for today, guys. Trying to put a bow on opportunities. I believe that I have covered the majority of all things opportunities. Hopefully, you found a lot of information to be held useful. Tomorrow, we are going to dive into the marketing aspects of Command. We're going to talk about designs and campaigns. Honestly, I may go a little out of order on the applets and dive into designs first. You'll see why tomorrow. Hopefully, you're having a fantastic day. And as always, I look forward to speaking with you again real soon.